Hello all, Rick here with another video looking at a location in Star Trek. In this case not a planet for the first time, but instead an iconic structure in orbit over Earth, the Earth Space Dock. Sometimes in Apocrypha the ESD is also referred to as Starbase 1, however it is technically not a starbase because of its location and cannot be Starbase 1, which exists someplace in orbit of a terraformed planetoid beyond Pluto. The space dock was planned as early as the 2250s, and although not the first station in orbit of Earth, let alone a Starfleet base, it was designed to be the primary orbital facility from which Starfleet could dock and manage its fleet. A centralised command point for the navigation of the fleet within the Sol system. Because of this, it was originally designed to operate as a military outpost more than a civilian dock, and as such was to have over 40 heavy phaser turrets for its defence. However, the United Earth government put its foot down on this point, feeling uncomfortable with such a heavily armed station in orbit, so these were removed. However, the space dock still retains these mounting frames and can be outfitted with operational cannons in case of emergencies within a week. It does however retain incredibly powerful deflector shields, more so than any starship of the line. Construction began on the station around the 2250s, and it was almost complete by 2257, as seen during the Federation Klingon War. It was officially completed by 2276, although due to its scale, parts of it were likely functional well before its completion. The mushroom shape was formed primarily by the large internal hangars, which is an alternate to the more common docking ring used by most space stations. Federation or otherwise. This large internal hangar featured a central spire that could dock eight ships across two levels, while the hangar can accommodate many more in mooring, but comfortably around another 10 or 12 or so for a total of 18 ships at any time. The hangar offers one benefit over standard docks that are open to space, and that is you can access the entire surface of a vessel in relative safety for maintenance and overhauls. This led many Starship overhauls to be conducted in the ESD, but no Starship constructions done from scratch here. Atop the dock is a large array of very sensitive and precise subspace antennae that served several functions. At the time of its construction this array was the most accurate sensor array in the Sol system, and it monitors the area. Aside from watching for threats, it also serves the more mundane purposes of watching for solar activity, radiation levels, tracking in-system debris, and of course communicating extensively with Federation subspace comm networks. Starfleet's main operations are conducted around this area too, within the walls that make up the hangar, where there are many administrative offices and the like, and most of these offer impressive views of the internal main docking spire, and external views of Earth and the often busy skies around it. These impressive backdrops are often enjoyed by off-duty personnel in any of the lounge areas, or by those attending meetings in any of the conference or diplomatic suites. If needs be, the entirety of Starfleet Command can be conducted from the ESD, shifting it from the headquarters on Earth, and the command decks feature several of Admiral's offices, as well as tactical information centres. Additionally, the main disc features laboratories and research labs for development of specific projects, and many such of high interest to Starfleet have some facility here. The most notable was the transport project of 2293, and the prototype testing of the USS Excelsior. The bottom sees a large matter-antimatter reactor that powers the entire station. Nearby to it are fabrication stations that can provide needed materials for the dock, and above this we have the more industrial areas, such as backup power, life support, water storage and waste reclamation. The very bottom of the reactor sphere is replete with more antennae which are a separate subspace array dedicated to Earth-side communications. Interestingly, the Kelvin timeline also has an orbital station over Earth, however, as its construction took place well after the timeline split, its construction was vastly different and it was operational by 2259. Due to its original design, it had a crew and civilian capacity of 76,625. 
although due to several overhauls through the generations it was expanded to house 312,000. One of these expansions was around the 2350s when the Galaxy class was in development. This saw the main gates of the ESD increased in scale in order to accommodate the width of the large vessel. In Apocrypha, another major overhaul takes place in 2410 after a large battle in orbit causes major damage to the facility, and while the station is reassembled to look the same outwardly, its internal layout and structure were updated. Alongside the ESD itself, there has been the gradual expansion of its facilities through supplementary space docks near the station to house more vessels for their refits and repairs. With the scale of the station and the level of involvement Starfleet has in the traffic of Earth, it was only a matter of time before the civilian presence on the station increased to the point of commerce. The ESD's internals are on par with that of most cities, and as such, facilities for recreation and trade were part of its original design, but have also expanded over the years. The middle ring, complete with its own hangars, was dedicated almost entirely to the traffic produced by trade, and over time the ESD became not only a Starfleet installation, but the premier dock for trade on Earth. As such, there are now restaurants, tours, gardens, shops alongside permanent civilian quarters, everything a city in space would need to flourish. It's basically the same thing we see on Deep Space Nine, where the station was originally to serve a single purpose, but with time, the trade and traffic blossomed into its own hub, administered by Starfleet. Even Deck 47, near the top command levels, has its own bar that at times resembles more of a nightclub. As a Starfleet facility, it was a great microcosm for the scientific naval life across a myriad of divisions. This made it an excellent location to train new cadets, and many in Starfleet Academy would transfer to the station for training at some point in their tutelage. It had training facilities and holodecks here, but more importantly almost every division could find some hands-on experience. Engineering cadets could examine some of the most powerful reactors, the ESDs themselves, or take part in the constant starship overhauls going on within the station. Security divisions had the internal patrols to take care of or coordinating the defence of Sol. Command division personnel could learn to oversee and manage a variety of projects, and the station's own medical facilities are second only to the Lagrange stations of L4 and L5, which themselves are dedicated hospital stations under Starfleet Medical. As you can see, the list goes on. So generally, there are several starships within the hangar at any one time, being maintained or overhauled, but the ESD has its own fleet of auxiliary craft across other hangars located across its bulk. These number at least 285 worker bees, 100 shuttles of various configurations, and 50 runabouts for inter-system travel. As mentioned in the opening, the station itself does not have any offensive capabilities, just some really hardy shielding, but it does have several starships assigned to local protection at any time. This is not even including the myriad of idle vessels that will always be present at Earth for whatever reasons, so most of the time, the ESD's lack of firepower is not an issue. The total size of the space dock is recorded as a beam of 3,812 metres, draft of 5,544 metres, and a dry mass of 10,552,000 tonnes and a volume of 21,924,000 metres cubed. That makes it almost three and a half miles tall, and apparently it can be seen from Earth. Something I'd believe, because it's real big. The station's design would go on to be occasionally reused for other Starfleet installations, such as Starbase 74 over Tarsus 3, but it was infrequent as there is seldom a need for such an expansive hub when a more reserved Starbase design would suffice. Space Dock would eventually have to be replaced or completely overhauled, but the only time we see a different base is 806 years after its last dimension, in the 32nd century when the United Earth seceded from the Federation, but by then Starfleet had a warp capable headquarters anyway. Thanks for watching this breakdown of the space dock of Earth. If San Francisco HQ is Starfleet's heart, then the ESD is its head. The sight of a Federation vessel returning to Earth in my opinion is not complete, 
without the silhouette of the space dock welcoming home its wayward wards. Until the next vid, I've been Rick, thanks again, and goodbye.